Hello, this is Tom from anti-boton.com and I'm here today to explain criticality. Criticality, it, it, well, it has to do with a neutron trying to get away from a bunch of atoms without impacting on it. I guess that's the best way to put it. <clears throat> if you were in a hang glider and you tried to fly past a couple random trees that were in a line, you might actually fly past them. If you added more and more trees, the probability that you successfully make it past them without hitting them will decrease in very, very rapidly. This is how criticality works. If you have an atom, and you have a neutron, think of a neutron as your hang glider flying through the trees, and think of the atom as the tree, that's when you hit. If the neutron hits the atom, it is absorbed into the atom, which is called uh, S-capture in this case, and the atom will then become metastable for a few seconds, well, actually probably a few nano nanoseconds, and then it will split apart into two smaller lighter atoms, releasing a lot of energy, even more neutrons, which will then go off to hit other atoms. <clears throat> Anyhow, this is called nuclear fission. So, like my hand glider going through the forest analogy, the more atoms you add, the greater the probability that the neutrons that are flying away will hit things. And a sub critical mass. You have a block of uranium or, or thorium or whatever that's just not big enough to really kind of spontaneously go or to keep going. So you have to keep injecting neutrons or, or confining the neutrons around the outside and forcing them back in again. Like they bounce off and go back in, thus increasing the probability of impact. This is a subcritical mass. If you take away whatever is reflected the neutrons back in, or you take away the beam of neutrons or whatnot, fission will go away within milliseconds. In a critical mass, in a critical mass there's enough actual uranium or thorium or whatever it is or plutonium, whatever it is you have to be using, that there are enough neutrons being produced that it will more or less continuously self-sustainably go. It sometimes will die out, usually it will not die out, but it's not going to explode or anything like that. And if you put uh, neutrons reflectors around the outside, you can increase the amount of neutrons rapidly that are moving through it. And in a supercritical mass, you have so much of this stuff squeezing, usually compressed together, that it automatically and spontaneously will start going under fission, and then it'll even explode. So, nuclear fuel uh, is anywhere in a reactor from subcritical to critical. Typically, it's subcritical. And what they do is they, they put in reflectors that reflect neutrons, and they put in moderators, which uh, slow them down and allow them to be captured. And this is how they allow the reactor to work. When you pump water through it, it slows the neutron down and allows the atom to catch it and then split. If it goes too fast, it'll just fly right past the atom without ever doing anything whatsoever. Now, in criticality, what they're doing... It, is they're trying to move things apart so that they they cannot become critical. They cannot be the critical density required for neutron capture. Maybe that will sound better. In the pools, there should be no neutron capture. These fuel um, pieces should be far enough apart that neutrons don't really do very much when they hit. They may they make little tiny spontaneous chains here and there, but nothing major. And there's water, which does slow the neutrons down for S capture. But there's a lot of water, which also, in its own way, actually slows them down to the point where they don't do much of anything. And there's boron sheets that are usually put in between them, which absorb the neutrons. So there should not be any criticality whatsoever inside of a fuel pond. In a reactor that has its control rods shoved into place and the control rods absorb neutrons, there should be no criticality really either. But one of the big dangers when you're working with these sorts of things is something called a criticality event. And a criti criticality event, what happens is if you take a piece of uranium and you all of a sudden put like uh, uh, neutron reflectors around the outside, like beryllium or something like that, what will happen is the neutrons will start bouncing back and forth and all of a sudden they'll build up rapidly into a flux of neutrons, which will zap you. And then they sometimes will die away. They can make like a burst of neutrons. Not an explosion per se, just a burst of energy. And <clears throat> they usually stop pretty soon after this. Such criticality events have killed many scientists in the past because they all of a sudden just blast you with a tremendous amount of neutron radiation and then they just stop. So that can be a problem. Neutron surges, neutron fluxes, it's actually called. But 
probably will not be. Anyhow, that is the way criticality works. Nuclear bombs are usually critical to supercritical. Usually they're, they're critical and then they're squished into supercritical. And nuclear fuel is usually subcritical. Having enrichments of usually maybe, I don't know, 3 to 6, 3 to 8 percent, usually 4 or 5. In a civilian reactor, uh, percent uh, U-235 as opposed to U-238. So that means for every block of U-238, you have a little tiny block worth of it that's U-235 you know, distributed amongst it. Uh, other reactor designs, like a thorium reactor, for example, doesn't require that because a thorium reactor uh, breeds rapidly and produces the fuel it needs on the fly. It's a much safer alternative, but unfortunately we don't use it for some odd reason. The greatest thing we could ever do, of course, is to use fusion, which doesn't require any of this whatsoever. Fusion doesn't even actually require any nuclear materials. It does if you're using tritium in the fusion, which is what's usually used, so that would be a radioactive substance. But you can have a, uh, a PNP chain, you can have uh, deuterium only, um, just a couple alternatives. And even with tritium, there's not a lot of it used, and the half-life of it as well, it's long. But it's gone within, you know, X number of years as opposed to, like, millennia. So, that's a basic explanation of how criticality works. Hopefully it makes sense, maybe it doesn't, let me know. Anyway, this is Tom from anti-proton.com signing off.